Fire Emblem 6 is a game where people like to act like you can't hit the enemies, but you can. So I decided to mod the game to make it so you actually can't hit the enemies by increasing every enemy's luck to 99, giving them up to 99 additional avoid, 49 additional hit, and making them pretty much impossible to be crit. For this run, I will be playing on hard mode, and my goal is to beat all of the game's chapters. This run was a lot harder than I expected, so if you do enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate if you liked the video and and subscribed. So let's start this run on chapter 1. The big problem on this chapter is we literally can't hit any of the enemies. Marcus is the only unit that has a chance to hit, but in true hit his chances to hit were like 6%, so he'd die long before we killed the enemies. So what I decided to do is lure in a few enemies with Marcus, then I separated the archer from the axe users and moved my entire team into this choke point near the village, as now the archer would attack and the fighter would block their path from behind, meaning I could freely attack this archer from up close, but I still couldn't hit them. So why was I doing this? Well, every time I attacked, I I gained 1 EXP, and as long as the enemies avoided my attacks, I wouldn't use up durability, so I could continue to attack, and 1 EXP at a time, I could steadily level up my units. I first grinded EXP on Bors, as he was close to reaching 13 defense, and when he reached 13 defense, I moved him back, and now he took 0 damage from the archer, allowing me to break their weapons, unlocking a new space to gain EXP by attacking with a javelin. This allowed me to grind EXP on 2 units at a time, that in the long run would save me some time. Uh, so I now just grinded to max level. Our first unit to hit max level was Bors, and it took me about two hours to do this. So now I brought in Alan and began to grind him up along with Lance. In about half an hour, Lance reached max level, so I now moved in Roy, who I actually had a little trouble leveling. As with a fairly accurate Iron Sword, Roy eventually gained the ability to hit. My other units didn't have the same problem, as they could attack with less accurate javelins or iron lances, or use rescue to decrease their skill. So by using this method, I couldn't grind Roy to max level, as eventually he would kill the archer. Fortunately, I had a plan to solve this, but right now, I just waited for Roy to land an attack. And then I swapped in Marcus and began to grind him up. Now in about another 40 minutes, Alan reached max level, so I moved him out, and now it was Walt's turn to level up. From here, it took around about 2 hours for Marcus to reach max level, and now it was time to start fighting the enemies. I used Marcus for this since he had both great defense and great accuracy, allowing me to steadily kill the aggressive axe fighters. Once they were gone, I lured the weaponless archer into a forest, and with its avoid boost, Roy could no longer hit them, so I now grinded him and Walt to max level, achieving my funny objective of reaching max level with everyone on the first chapter. But that's not even the funniest part, as after using Marcus and Roy to dispatch the incoming foes, just the boss remained, and with Roy's rapier having 10 more hit than an iron sword, and a sport with Walt boosting his hit by 5, he was my best option to fight the boss. And here is where my lack of planning caused me to have some problems. While I was grinding, I was quite generous on using vulnerabilities to prevent any deaths, as I didn't expect healing to be a problem. But now, with no more vulnerabilities remaining, Roy had to fight the boss, and with the avoid, defense, and healing granted by the gate tile, the odds of Roy winning this fight were stacked against me. But nothing could save me now. I've made mistakes, and this was the result, where I just had to land three attacks before the boss. We were able to land one attack, but the boss managed to land their attacks, and Roy just died, causing a game over, and forcing me to reset back to the start of the chapter. 11 hours of grinding everyone to max level, and I still lost. But I now understood what mistakes I made, so if I tried the map one more time, I was sure I could win. So for my next attempt, I was extremely careful, and made sure to conserve as much HP and vulnerabilities as I could. And again, like before, I grinded a few units to max level. This time, I didn't grind everyone to max level since I was slightly tilted from losing last time, so I just wanted to end this map as quickly as I could. Another improvement I made from last time is I made sure Roy was adjacent to two support partners, so he would gain a C rank with two allies, giving five additional hits. So now Lance, Roy, and Marcus are max level. Alan's like level 14, and Bors and Walt are around level 4. Now I just had to carefully fight the enemies in the north. And when I say carefully, I needed to make sure to conserve as much HP as possible, as I didn't want to use more vulnerabilities than I had to. But doing this caused me to make a mistake, causing my level 20 Lance to just die. Yeah, that was kind of dumb, but with this enemy killed, we now had to fight the boss. My Roy was slightly below average in terms of strength this time around, so this fight was going to last a lot longer. But with four vulnerabilities, Roy had a good chance of winning this time around. 
Roy now attacked, and we begun an extremely climactic battle. I felt the pressure of every attack that missed and hit. I really didn't want to have to reset and have to do this map all over again. All I could do is hope Roy won. Eventually, I ran out of vulnerabilities, and with just 14 HP remaining, I feared Roy may just die. Fortunately, after landing this attack, the boss was on 1 HP. Any attack now could end this chapter, but Roy just missed. And missed, and missed, and missed. On this next enemy phase, the boss would recover out of one-shot range. So I did a risky attack on player phase, and proved a skilled Roy can beat any damas. On chapter 2, I used rescue to place force on the fort to block off most of the enemies. But the soldiers that remained were pretty hard to kill, as with lances equipped, they gave the most accurate weapon type a minus hit penalty, making them quite challenging to kill. And on this try, eventually I ended up getting Roy killed. So on attempt number two, I got a little luckier, and the soldiers were easier to deal with. But Deke's squad was in danger, so I had to use Shana to rescue and drop all three of Deke's squad over to the rest of my team. Then I finished off the soldiers and dispatched a few enemies to the south. Now I broke the weapons of the few that survived and grinded my my team up, letting Alan reach his level cap and allowing Shana, Bors, Deke and Volt to gain around 10 levels. After finishing up grinding, I dispatched the remaining enemies with Deke, Alan and Roy. Now with Alan, I moved up and baited in a few enemies all the way back to the fort where we could safely kill them. Next, I performed a similar strategy to last time, but instead of running back, this time I just placed Alan on the fort here. And with an above average defense stat of 15, he was just tanky enough to safely break the weapons of the opposing enemies. With their weapons broken, I could safely move in the rest of my army and attempt to kill them. Unfortunately, I struggled to kill the soldier as with the fort's avoid boost, he was actually pretty hard to hit. So I just gave up on that and started to move upwards towards the boss. With a lance equipped, they inflicted a hit penalty on my sword users, so I just broke their weapon to remove this penalty. Then I equipped the armor slayer for high damage and started to attack with Roy. Obviously, it took some time, but eventually I landed the two attacks needed to kill and seized to clear the chapter. Chapter 3 is a map that I actually found to be quite difficult to beat, as a large amount of enemies aggro towards you fairly quickly. They dealt quite high damage, so my first plan of placing balls in the forest to hold them off it didn't work. To try to save him, I tried to place a distraction to give him some space to retreat, but he was blocked off again, and the enemies above the rest of my squad were proving to be quite difficult to deal with, so I've reset. On my next try, I decided to use boars to hold this choke point, giving my other units an opportunity to kill the enemies above, with the soldiers being the priority, as I could just surround the archer. Unfortunately, I got a little impatient and attacked with Roy, not realizing that he would die if he was hit twice. I now spent over an hour trying to get the lock needed to kill the soldiers quickly, as if they stayed alive, it left more targets to heal, and I needed to make sure they were gone before the reinforcements appeared. Eventually, I was fortunate enough to land my attacks, and now I recruited Lou, who I expected to be quite good, as fire has a hit of 95, equal to that of a slim sword, and Lou has pretty good skill, so if I grinded him to max level, I expected that he would be quite good. Anyway, I now focused my efforts on killing the archer, while Bors, Marcus, and Wade held off the enemies below, aiming to break the enemy's weapons. Unfortunately, I wasn't quick enough to kill the archer. The cows were approaching, so I sent in Alan. And I had to move Shana down to not lure in any of the cows with her. With the archer no longer blocked off, they could now attack. Fortunately, after they moved, I could trap them again. And now we just waited for the enemies below to break their weapons, and for the cavalry above to also break their weapons. While doing this, I tried to grind some levels again, and found out that for some reason, magic weapons use durability even if they miss so Lou was much worse than I initially expected. Also, while I was grinding, I used up my heal, so I couldn't really heal much anymore. Once I broke the enemy's weapons, I used some of my less useful units to block the lower lane, and I began to move my whole team up towards the boss. Before fighting them, there were two axe fighters in the way. For one, I just broke their weapon from over this wall, and for the other, I lured them in and killed them with Roy. Right now, I didn't have the HP to break the boss's weapon, and I wanted to do that to increase my hit rate with an armor slayer. Fortunately, in the lower village, there was a mend, so I now sent Alan on a solo mission to collect it. He had no problems on the way there, and brought it back, and with the healing, I could break the boss's equipment, allowing for Roy to attack them until I killed them. I could end the map now, but I also wanted the treasure, so I healed up my team with the throne tile, and I started to kill the enemies below to clear a safe path with Chad to steal a vulnerary, and after killing the knight with Marcus, Chad could pick up the treasure, and I could end the map. Chapter 4 was a relatively simple map. I merely just blocked off the three choke points, and I sent Shana down to drop some of my units on the islands in the south to block off the reinforcements. 
She then visited the armory to purchase a few weapons, mostly slim weapons since they had the most hits, and were pretty much the best weapons to use throughout the game. Shana also purchased a few heals to help her survive the incoming calves, and she made her way back to my squad to distribute some of my purchases. I pretty much now just waited for the enemies to break their weapons. The only problem were the reinforcements, and I had to block off another choke point to keep them away. Eventually, when the enemy's weapons broke, I could place literally anyone in front of them to hold them off, and then I began to fly Shana and Alan over to the left and dropped him off to reposition the calves. I followed up on this by rescuing Alan again and placing him right here to fight the archer, but alone he had terrible hit rates. So I used rescue to bring in Roy since him and Roy had a support together and after taking one out Shana could help surround the other, meaning our final obstacle was the boss, who actually had quite high speed, meaning our hit rates were low. Roy with the rapier was my best option to fight them, but first I had to break their javelin to prevent Roy from suffering a weapon triangle disadvantage. I also made sure to rescue over Clarine to heal everyone up. Once the javelin broke, I started to attack, and I made sure to not break their steel sword since it weighed down the boss, decreasing their speed, and it also allowed the boss to attack on enemy phase, meaning we could attack the boss twice as much in a single turn, making the healing they would receive from the fort less impactful. With enough good luck, the boss died. Next, I just sent Clarine over to recruit Rodger, then seized to end the chapter. Chapter 5 was another fairly easy map, but on my first try, I still made a mistake of placing boars in one of the forts above the starting area, and he just died. So on my next try, I placed Marcus right here, alone in the forts, and used Shana to rescue boars. And I dropped boars on the fort in the top left. There were also some bandits coming in from the left, but by placing Alan in range of them, I could gradually break their weapons, and if I ever had to heal, I could replace him with Roy. I also tried placing Alan in the fort over to the left, but he took too much damage, and I had to retreat. Pretty much now, I just had to wait until the enemies that attacked broke their weapons. Then when that was done, it was time to grind a few levels on Rodger. As a hero crest on Chapter 7 is our first promotional item, and with Rodger's high skill, he seemed like our best option to use it. But first, I obviously wanted him to reach max level. I didn't do all the grinding here, but I did get a few levels, and while I was doing this, I broke the weapons of the enemies near the boss with Alan. A safe task now, since the strong mage ran up to the north for some reason. When their weapons broke, I rescued over Roy, Shana, Clarine, and Walt, and I began to engage the boss. But with their killer axe, an unlucky crit could kill most of my units. So before this chapter started, I made sure to reset so the boss had 18 strength, a little lower than normal. And at this value, with a sword equipped, Alan could just barely survive a crit, and could heal up with the help of the fort and Clarine, who was gaining quite a large amount of EXP. When the killer axe broke, I moved my support some range to help Roy and began to fight the boss. When Roy needed healing, I could easily heal with Clarine and I could rescue her away to keep her out of range of the boss's hand axe. So I had no problems gradually defeating the boss. Again, I grinded up Rodger a little and got bored around the time he was level 9, so I just seized to beat the chapter. Chapter 6, for the most part, was relatively easy. I began turn 1 by advancing forward to lure in the two mages, and I could move to be right next to them. And now I just had to break their weapons, and the entire enemy group above would effectively be useless. I also blocked in Cap and stole her lockpick and vulnerary. So the only problem now were the scarce amount of enemies approaching from the left and right choke points. But obviously, they were easy, so now I could safely pick up most of the treasure and even recruit Sue. The enemies in the upper left room were also quite easy, and I could steadily approach the boss and kill the mages, leaving just two armored units who didn't move, making it easy to break both of their javelins as well as the boss's flux. Once I finished off the Armored Knights, I just had to defeat the boss. That can't be too hard, right? Well, it was, because with a 10% chance to hit, 2% in true hits, it seemed close to impossible to defeat the boss. Four attacks had to pretty much land in a row if I was going to win, and after considering the boss's healing, I decided to reset. As there were two ways I could make this slightly easier, and I had to reset to do them. The first was just resetting so the boss had both their lowest possible speed, as well as the lowest possible defense. The second way to increase my damage was to just kill off Walt since he supported Roy, and by replacing that support with an Alan support, I could gain an extra point of damage. 
With Roy dealing two additional points of damage, it would now take just three attacks in a row to kill, considering the boss's healing. I could also make this slightly easier by using a goddess icon in the chest to increase Roy's hit from 2% in true hit to about a 2.5% hit in true hit. With these improvements, my chances to win were significantly higher and I managed to secure the kill in around about 40 minutes of Roy attacking the boss. But before I seized, I did some grinding again and leveled Rodger all the way to level 20, and Sue to around level 11. Chapter 7 is a map that is usually pretty hard, and for this run, it was also pretty hard. I started my first turn by moving Roy up to recruit Zealot and Treg on the next turn. After doing this, I could use Rescue to move everyone to safety. Unfortunately, on my first try, Zealot died, and then I quickly noticed a problem with the Wyverns. With their huge strength and defense, they were a constant thorn at my side. There was simply no way to deal with them as they dealt spectacular damage and were nearly unkillable with my low hit rates and their high defense. And since they had fire movement, I couldn't retreat and hold them off in a choke point. I now spent around 40 minutes just trying to figure out a way to deal with them. And I gave up and just looked up how their AI works. And it works that if you're in attack range of them after moving twice, or an easier way to explain it is within 15 spaces of them, the wyverns to the left and right move. After Figuring this out, on turn 1 I moved to just barely be out of range of them to attack, and recruited Zealot and Trek like before, rescued away, and now I could retreat without having two wyverns chasing after me, making it much easier to recruit Noah and make my way south into the lower choke point. However, Bors couldn't make it there, but with his high defense, he was fine for now. Now I could easily hold off the units coming in from the west, however the three units to the east were not as easy. It took multiple turns just to take them out, but with careful positioning, Roy managed to kill the two most dangerous with the archer and mage, leaving the armored unit alone who while I was trying to kill, I baited in another armor, who died to Shana and Roy. While this was going down, the cavalry reinforcements came in, and they weren't a problem for our units in the choke points, but Bors was in trouble, as I had to keep using physic to keep him healed, as the Silverlanx Cav dealt impressive damage. The Cav above Bors and the Cav to the right of Bors could also deal damage, but they just didn't attack for some reason. Like, they just stopped doing anything, and I was extremely confused. So if you have any idea on why they stopped attacking, comment it down below. Anyway, with most of the enemy's weapons broke and Rodger promoted, now was a good time to grind. So I grinded, and grinded until Sue could land her attacks, and I used her to slowly kill some of the Cavs. Then, I used Rodger to help Bors, and killed the entire group of enemies with little trouble, meaning now I could safely lure in the Wyverns, who when surrounded were not all that hard to beat, allowing me to advance until the reinforcements appeared, who unsurprisingly were real easy to kill with Rodger. As usual, I broke the boss's weapon, and then attacked with Roy and Rodger. Since there were two attackers this time, it was a little easier to kill the boss. So then I just seized to clear the chapter. Chapter 8 was up next. I wanted the loot in the chests. And because of this, I played very recklessly in my first few attempts. I just wanted to go fast. But obviously, going fast when you have terrible hit rates is quite hard. But with enough tries, I cleared out the first few groups of enemies, and now I just use rescue to speed up my units with low move. When my thief was in range to open the door to the room full of chests, there were two thieves approaching from the other side. So I had to push inside fast if I wanted the loot like the knight's crest. I then rescued with Sue to keep my thief safe, and Marcus with Roy came in there, along with Rodger and Ellen who blocked off the enemies to the left. Additionally, in the north, I positioned like this, causing the archer to move in and block every enemy from attacking. So they were no longer a problem. And after trapping the mage in the treasure room, this map was now easy. I could steal some items, promote Alan, and then slowly dispatch the foes to the left, as well as the reinforcements to the right. Once they were defeated, there was little resistance in my forward march, allowing me to reach the boss along with the chests, allowing Shana and Clarine to promote. And that means there was XP to be gained. So again, after breaking the boss's weapon, it was time to grind up a few levels. Then it was time to try to fight the boss. But my luck was really bad. Roy and Rodger were not capable of landing much damage with effective weaponry. With their honestly minuscule amount of damage dealt, I was doubting if Roy and Rodger would even be able to defeat the boss before their weapons broke. So I had to come up with a new plan, and it was extremely simple. You see the three armored knights? They can triangle attack. At the time, I literally had never used this mechanic before. I knew it always crit, but I wasn't sure if it always hit. And it turns out that it does, meaning I could consistently deal high damage with this new tool, meaning the armored knights were shaping up to be some of my best units. So after effortlessly defeating the boss, I moved on to chapter 8x. 
And here, I've really wanted to feed some kills to my Armored Knights. So on turn 1, I set up for 2 kills on the next turn, then Shana and Roy held off the low amount of enemies rushing in from above, and my promoted units moved in front of my Armored units to protect them, since they were still a low level and took high damage if they were doubled. After clearing out most of the enemies to the left, there was an opportunity to feed my armors 2 kills for some EXP. Then I steadily made my way around the right side of the map, really not having any problems since my armored units could land reliable attacks with a triangle attack, and also I could really just bait out the enemies one by one. So this next part of the map was easy, and pretty much just free EXP for Wendy, who was leveling up quite fast. The only problem on this map now was the boss, Henning. He has an impressive speed stat and a void stat, but if I broke his steel blade he would equip a hand axe, giving him a small speed penalty, as well as granting Rudger the weapon triangle advantage for an extra 10 hits. But still, our chances to hit were very low, so I had to give him a A support with Clarine, and now with a 19% chance to hit, we landed just enough attacks to defeat Henning, and we obtained the very powerful and accurate Durandal and moved on to chapter 9. A fog of war map, but still Still another easy chapter. For this part at the start here, I just baited out the first few pirates with my strong Rodka and blocked off the upper choke with Marcus who was dropped in by Shana. Soon after the first few pirates were defeated, I rescued Marcus and dropped him on one of the forts to block the pirate reinforcements that appeared on turn 12. I planned to block off the other forts, but first I had to utilize Rodka to secure a foothold around this point near the center of the map, where I could recruit her with ease along with Shin. And with that task done, Noah and Sue were rescued onto the forts to prevent the pirates from coming in. Noah I had a little trouble with a stray pirate since he was untrained, but by placing a higher priority target across the water, the pirate moved in range to be triangle attacked. Now, all I really had to do is slowly advance towards the north and south and kill the enemies there. It was a mostly thoughtless process, so let's not waste too much time there, and I made sure to visit the village on the right, as I wanted to recruit Elfin as he had a support with Faye, who I was expecting to be quite useful in the endgame. After advancing left, I encountered the boss, who was actually pretty bad. Not even a crit could kill Rodger, and Rodger dealt more than enough damage to kill the boss within a few rounds of combat, allowing me to seize with Roy and move on to chapter 10. A map where there are quite a few objectives, with recruiting characters, keeping green units alive, and visiting villagers, which was my first priority, and to do so I sent Shana up to visit the villagers closest to where the bandit reinforcements appeared. My other units really just pushed into this part. While our hit rates were low, we still had quite a few opportunities to attack, so this was mostly no problem. But I chose to leave my free armored units just around here to take on any enemies coming from the right. When the bandits appeared, I moved in Alan to fight them. They were no match for him, including this guy. But some were a little tricky, and were moving around the mountains to raid some of the villages. So I made sure to visit some of the villages on the other side of the wall with Shana. Then, suddenly on the other side of the map, a Klein appeared, so I recruited him with Chlorine, turning his units green. Now he had to make his way north to recruit Fear who was a little more trouble to recruit, since she decided to not move on some turns. Eventually, we recruited her, but unfortunately, all of her green unit allies couldn't escape, so I could no longer obtain the Elysian Whip, and with Klein's archers also surrounded by cavalry reinforcements, I also wasn't going to obtain the Orion Bolt. In fact, I kinda just let the Cavs kill all of Klein's archers, since with 99 lock, they were actually quite dodgy, and it actually took more time than you'd expect for all of them to die. Yeah, uh, apparently while I took a break, I forgot to click record again, so the cabs are now dead and I trapped this archer, and my plan now was to just grind EXP. But first, I broke the boss's weapon and attacked with Rodger with a less accurate silver sword with the first blow, then when I landed an attack, I switched to the slim sword and also started to attack with Clarine. Once the boss died, I proceeded to grind a few levels on Fia, Fur, Bath and Wendy. I stopped when they gained around 6 levels and proceeded on to chapter 11, a map that in all honesty shouldn't have been that hard. The enemies were weak and real easy to dispatch, meaning I could advance to block the choke points located above and below. But this was my first mistake, as in the northern choke point, Rodka couldn't kill the archer here, which was a huge problem, as since there was no longer a path to retreat, the greenlets just stood completely still, leaving me confused and them dead, making me lose out on an energy ring, and since the most accurate weapon type have low might, every point of strength matters, so I reset, meaning I had to replay the first few turns. Not a problem, right? Well, because I lost in such a frustrating way, I was slightly tilted and made a bunch of misplays, 
and kept losing units and having to reset. Eventually, I made my way back to the part where I lost before, and by carefully positioning Rudger to not be in range of the archer, I didn't have the same problem of blocking the bridge, meaning the green units continued to advance, while I trapped the archer here to be safe. Since I didn't care about Geats or the village, holding the lower choke point was simple, and the same was true for the top lane after I killed the approaching mages, as I just had to hold off the extremely mediocre reinforcements with Rudger. This still took quite a while since my hit rates were bad, and while I waited for Rudger to kill them all, I made some progress on the other side of the map. Since there were little enemies there, I found it quite easy to use some triangle attacks to beat some kills to Wendy, who I wanted to reach max level for the next map, where my units would be split up, so I broke this mercenary's weapon and used him to grind her up to max level, and to also gain some levels on Fur and Fear. With an axe equipped, the boss was nothing special, and I beat the chapter. Now, chapter 12 was actually a little hard, as the requirements to unlock chapter 12 X is to beat this map in 20 turns, which you usually isn't that hard, but with our unit's awful hit rates, it was going to be hard to kill the enemies on the way to the boss. Another hard aspect of this map is we have to split our team into two squads, meaning one is going to be much weaker than the other. For me, that was the squad on the right, as the only strong units there were my armors who could only hit our opponents with a triangle attack, and with the enemy fighter's hand axe, I found it quite hard to position to execute one, meaning I was wasting quite a few of my precious turns, just trying to progress on the right side. My squad on the left was actually having the opposite experience. It was quite easy to kill the enemies, and they made swift progress. The only challenging part was where there were these mages and archers. They were impossible to hit with inaccurate ranged weapons, so I just had to ignore them, which by itself wasn't an issue, but this combined with the group of axe users made this quite hard, as my frail units used for their supports to improve my frontliners' hit couldn't survive long enough while being assaulted by the mages and archers meaning most of my attempts really struggled to clear away up here. They also made it hard to heal with Clarine, since she was likely to also die. Yeah, so it took me a while to figure this part out, but eventually I came up with a few optimizations. The first was placing Wendy in the front here to make the fighter equip his killer axe, meaning I could set up a triangle attack, and it really sped me up on the right side of the map, making it easy to collect the chests. On the left, I really just baited up the warrior to attack over this wall, and then lured the fighters into this choke, to make the ones with hand axes much easier to fight. And with them killed, I could drop down Roy, let Kaf open the door, and I broke the wall with my armors, who were my best choice for a quick boss kill. It just took a few attacks to kill them, meaning Roy could seize, and we moved on to chapter 12x. A fog of war map, but honestly, a map that is not all that hard. There's some treasure on this map, but most of it is stolen by the thieves, who are hard to hit. So the only chest I really cared about was the one in the far north with a white gem. And I moved quickly to make my way over there, steadily taking out enemies from behind, blocking choke points. Yeah, nothing complicated. This map's pretty free, especially with an overleveled Rudger. Without much thought, I reached the far north of the map, picked up the chest, took down the two guys near the boss, and with an axe equipped giving Rudger weapon triangle advantage, they were also quite easy to beat. Surprisingly, Chapter 13 was a map I actually had a lot of trouble on. Why? Well, the Wyverns combined with the camps coming in from both above and below made it hard to find the time to actually kill them, especially if they moved on to a flyer-only tile, making it hard to swiftly kill them with a triangle attack. Anyway, my first couple of attempts could be summarized as I was really just experimenting. I tried running up north first, but that didn't really work well, so I then positioned my armored knights like this so they could deal with the calves with triangle attacks, and I focused the bulk of my team on clearing out the units to the right. As I said before, the problem was the Wyverns. I first tried distracting them with Shana, moving her up to lure them away from my team, but this didn't really solve the problem, and I also found a new problem, that if I advanced too far up, more Wyverns would charge in. Ultimately, the solution I came up with was to just use Shana to steadily lure them in close enough that Rudger would be at the edge of their range, causing them to attack him, and with his fine hit rates with the Lance Reaver, he could kill them. With them both gone, this map was far easier, but it was still going to be quite tedious, as this map has reinforcements. The ones from above were simple enough to deal with. I just had to kill one of the calves to allow my armors to stay here and break some weapons. Nothing too hard, especially considering I didn't have to kill them. The reinforcements from below were much more tedious, as I actually needed to kill them to allow me to have some space to move about the map to help me when the other Wyverns moved in. With these choke points blocked, it was really just a matter of time before they all died as I could constantly heal with Clarine, and rescuing her out was no big deal. After a little under an hour, I disappeared 
disposed of the southern calves, meaning I could start to tackle the rest of the map. First I engaged the archers on the ballista. With their lackluster numbers, it was easy to win. Then I moved up enough that the wyverns came in. With triangle attacks, they were also pretty easy. After progressing north to the next group of calves, I used more triangle attacks to kill them. Pretty much just leaving the boss alive, who as a flyer does not benefit from terrain avoid bonuses, making Rudger have a pretty high 41% chance to hit them. And with elf instances, I killed them quick enough that their healing was not an issue. Since chapter 14 was up next, a map I needed to clear within a strict time limit again, I knew if I wanted a legendary weapon, I should at least grind fear to a reasonable level, which was just until she reached her level cap. To my dismay, I forgot to give her an Elysian whip to promote her, so this was as far as I could go, meaning after clearing this map, I progressed to a map that I spent a really long amount of time on. The turn limit of 25 turns was my main problem, as it caused me to have to play extremely fast, so on turn 1, I had to rescue Roy with Shana to speed him up, and I pretty much just rushed over to the boss as fast as I could. To hold off the first group of mercenaries, I dropped Rudger, but there was still a second group of mercenaries close to the boss, and since they just moved, my path ahead was blocked off. I tried to push ahead and dropped Roy to boost Shana's avoid, but that was a mistake, as Roy just died to a wyvern and a mage. And uh, speaking of the wyverns, they were pretty hard to deal with, since they were hard to hit, and they also have the same AI as the ones in Chapter 7. They move if you're in range of them, if they move twice and could attack you. So if you approach the boss, you know the wyverns are going to be close by. Now, on a future attempt with a similar strategy as my first attempt, I actually managed to reach the boss, who is the biggest problem on this map, as with his very high speed, speed you like can't hit him. I even had to pull out the Durandal to deal high damage, allowing for him to die in two hits, but it was still quite unreliable. And on this try, I lost before I really had a chance to fight him. To win on this map, it was all about making small optimizations. Like, remember how I was using Rudger to fight the heroes? Well, he was still quite frail, and there was a genuine high chance he would die. So I replaced him with Alan, who both had a higher defense stat and access to Armats, granting plus five defense. And since his accuracy was low, there was no chance for me to use up any durability on it. Another optimization I made is where I dropped Alan. As before, I got blocked off by the mercenaries. So now I dropped Alan right here, in range to cause the second group of mercenaries to move. And I could retreat a little to open up some space for Shana and Fia to move on by without losing too much HP. But on the next turn, they were likely to take high damage from the wyverns. So I used Sleep with Clarine and also danced her to sleep the other wyvern. Now I could have Shana equip the Durandal to kill most of the non-slept wyverns. On the next turn, Clarine could assist with Sleep again, and I could kill the remaining wyvern with the Durandal. Now I could attack the boss about 4-6 to six times before I would consider this run a loss. Why? Well, let me explain what my other units were doing on this map. My two thieves were pretty much just collecting the treasure, and almost everyone else just stayed around here where you obtain the boots to assist Clarine as she had to be in the right place to land the sleeps. Yeah, also on most of my runs, I ended up getting this guy killed. Milady had a pretty interesting journey, as on turn one, she rescued Roy, placing him around here, then rushed over to Chad, picked him up, and moved left. Here is another part of the map I experimented on, as there was a point where I was trying to use Milady to bait in the wyverns to keep them away from Shana, but ultimately, I gave up on this, and just decided to use her to pick up Warp that she had to make it past this mage to do so. To make this easier, I eventually just decided to kill off Chad, to make it easier to reach the tile with warp. There was also one final useful item to be obtained, in the silver card, and Sophia could be in range to pick it up by moving right here, just out of range of the wyverns above, and she was our time limit, as around turn 9 the reinforcements would reach her and she would die. That's pretty much every aspect of this map explained. And I should also mention I used an energy ring on Shana, as if the boss heals 10% of their HP from the throne, it would be just out of range of Shana killing them. And with the energy ring, this would allow her to kill them even if they heal. So now it was just a matter of Shana getting lucky and landing her attacks. On my winning run, I got one attack on enemy phase into one on player phase. Then I just had to suspend, reset my game, reload, check a portrait, then move Sophia up for the guaranteed chance to pick up the silver card. Then I repeated this trick to guarantee Milady would pick up the warp, then I could seize and clear the map. And since we beat the map in under 25 turns, we moved on to chapter 14x, an extremely easy chapter. You can literally just hold your ground near the start of the map and quite easily kill everything. Once enough enemies died, I lured in the units around the boss with Shana, forcing them to charge in. Since this part of the map was real easy, I just kind of turned my brain off and it caused me to make a mistake. And the druid with Nosferatu kind of killed Clarine. Considering she supported Rudger, I decided to reset for her. 
and since the map was easy, I quickly made my way back to the point where I died with ease. This time, I was more careful around the Nos Mage, since with Nosferatu's healing, he was close to unkillable, making a triangle attack the best way to deal with him. The journey to the boss was real simple, along with the boss itself, since they could just be one shot with a triangle attack. Next up was Chapter 15. It seemed like a pretty easy map, however the village on the right seemed oh, no. almost impossible to obtain. There was no way to kill enough enemies to make it there in time, so now I just decided to use Warp, making it easy to obtain the Hamern with Shana, and with her high move, she retreated back to the rest of my team with relative ease. Another side objective on this map is making sure to keep Percival's green units alive, as if you keep them alive, you can pick up an extra Knight's Crest, useful for promoting my armored units. So I rescued to prevent the cats from suiciding, and then I just held my ground in this choke here. The enemies couldn't really kill anyone, and Clarine could heal up anyone who was low. After enough time passed, the large enemy squad was vanquished, meaning I could push up a little more to make more enemies move, then I just brought them back to the rest of my team, killed them, and with very few units remaining, the road to the boss was quite simple. Triangle attacks could reliably score KOs, paving the way forward towards the boss, who I broke their weapons and considered grinding up Fur and Fear, before I got bored in like 5 minutes and just started to kill them with Shana. Again with dances with Elfin, this didn't really take all that long to do, and I ceased to move on to chapter 16. Because I killed my thieves on chapter 14, and when I replayed chapter 6, I forgot to talk to Cav, I currently had no thieves, which is a pretty big problem as this map has some quite valuable treasure chests, along with a very strong stealer ball with a Delphi shield on Narshan, making flyers immune to effective damage. Fortunately, Kaf appears on this map, so I could actually recruit her here, and doing that was my priority. So I rushed through here to quickly reach the point where she appears as a reinforcement. By using Fei to break this bishop's purge, making my way up was not all that hard, but it got much harder when I opened the door, causing enemies to begin to push towards me, with the most problematic unit being Douglas, as he had to survive if I wanted to access chapter 16x, and with a normal luck stat, he was easy to accidentally kill. With him dangerously close, I realized that I probably opened the door too soon. There was no way to push into the next room, meaning I had to reset. So on my next try, I pretty much did the same as last time, but I waited for a few more turns before opening the door, and I also lured in the powerful paladin, so I could kill them when I opened the door, making it easy to finish off the final few enemies in that room, allowing me to be there in time to recruit Kaf, which was good, but now with the enemies coming in from both above and to the left, and the possibility of the reinforcements appearing if I didn't block the stairs, I was pretty much trapped in this room, which was a big problem, as mages with air caliber capable of dealing high damage to Shana were approaching, along with Douglas, who could attack unpredictably and be crit, making it easy to accidentally kill him, meaning I had to prioritize killing the enemies to the right, giving me an opportunity to retreat in that direction. But first, I had to wait until the reinforcements stopped appearing, so until turn 16, then I had to slowly pull back and push through this choke, using Alan and Rodger to block off the approaching foes making it possible to make my way over to this choke point here, which was the perfect place to slowly kill every enemy charging in. With them eventually gone, I decided to make my way over to the chests. Alan defeated the Manakeet on the way, and afterwards I started to head over to the other side of the map to pick up some more chests. Now Milady moved over to Zeus to recruit him, and I used the secret shop to buy a Knight's Crest, allowing my armored trio to all be promoted, meaning they could all gain EXP now. And since they had access to the triangle attack, they could actually land attacks against Narshan, who was quite a high level, meaning they would gain a large amount of EXP with every attack, allowing me to easily grind about 10 levels on all of my armors, who then easily killed Narshan and I ceased to move on to chapter 16x. Overall, while this map looked annoying with all the long range magic, there wasn't really anything stopping me from taking it fairly slow, and breaking the long range magic from a safe distance, then I could gradually move up and just steadily thin enemy numbers making it possible for me to push towards the left to fight off the calves with no problem. Now, you see, this is actually my first time playing this game, and since this map was so far pretty easy, I didn't look up how the AI worked on this map, and apparently if this purge mage attacks, it triggers like the whole map into moving. This completely caught me off guard, and with my awful hit rates, I struggled to fight the units that were flooding in, and the calves blocked my path to retreat. All appear to be lost. And then Clarine died. Considering I was in a losing position, resetting seemed like my best option. Since I lost, I did some research to figure out how the map's beam gimmick works. It's just based on what tiles you're on. And for my strategy of pretty much just baiting the entire map in and retreating into these choke points, the spaces I needed to make sure to avoid were the tiles inside the choke points 
and the tiles to the right of the left choke point, and the tiles to the left of the right choke point. The main problem for my strategy of luring in the whole map was I really needed to be careful of the long range magic, making sure no units near the center line would die to two consecutive attacks. Finally, when the bishops ran out of perches, the map was simple and I just waited for the enemies to die. It took some time, but there was no risk of me losing, so I could eventually fully move up to the boss. Of course, I broke their weapons, and defeating them was actually pretty hard, since I didn't deploy my armored units, so I couldn't use a triangle attack. To speed things up, I ended up equipping Durandal, to eventually cause the boss to die, meaning I could move on to chapter 17. Honestly, a pretty easy one. I just pushed up north on the first few turns, then my armored units turned back to fight the incoming foes below. As you would expect, the physical units were easy, no problem there, but since the mage and archer positioned next to each other, I couldn't use a triangle attack, meaning I couldn't kill the mage, and since the map was fairly easy, I wasn't paying attention and got Bath killed, who was pretty good, so I reset. By being a little more careful on attempt 2, avoiding an unnecessary death while dispatching the mages was rather straightforward. Fortunately, with my armors in place, the incoming flyer reinforcements didn't have a chance to pressure my more fragile allies. On the other side of the map, I really just placed Alan right in this choke point over here. This blocked off all incoming calves, keeping my team safe. While Alan slowly killed the calves, my armors progressed up to another cavalry squad. Triangle attacked them down, permitting me to move up towards the boss to clear out some foes. By the way, Roy Squad now played out all the calves, meaning they could now approach the boss. And as usual, since the boss held an axe, I had no problems with them. Since Fur still hadn't reached her level cap, I grinded her to level 20 so I could promote her, then moved on to chapter 18. Surprisingly, this map is like hard, which I honestly didn't expect. The first problem are the incoming weapons that move on turn 1. My solution for them was to just hold them off with my powerful armored units, but their high move was still quite tricky, as they could just move past them to attack my more fragile units, meaning I had to kill them fast, so I used armads, but one still survived, and with the extra damage from the ballista, Elfin died. On my next attempt, I rescued Wendy across the river to place her in range to fight the Wyverns, while they were out of range of causing trouble for the rest of my army, allowing me to push along the left side. While the evasive terrain was annoying, I still managed to take out this archer, but since I was in interested in the upper village, as it contained a secret book, I moved up here, causing the Pegasi to begin to move, and she alone couldn't fight them, so she backed away. However, they chased after her, along with the reinforcements. With javelins equipped, it was almost impossible to defeat them on enemy phase, and since my hit rates were low, I was unable to defeat them on player phase, meaning they could just waltz past my durable frontliners and attack my fragile units, causing me to eventually consider the run a loss since my units started to die. I now continue to attempt this, but even if I didn't bait in the flyers above, the flyer reinforcements were just too much to handle, causing me to continuously lose, but eventually I figured out a solution, and it was quite funny that all I had to do is place my armored units in range of like all of the enemies. The rest of my team just hunkered down near the bottom right of the map, they still had to fight some Pegasus reinforcements that appeared to the right, but it was only two every two turns, making them still dangerous, but completely possible to beat without any deaths. With everyone to the right safe, I could start focusing focusing on the rest of the enemies. They didn't really deal much damage, but this bandit that moved on a forest tile was actually going to cause me some problems, since Wendy couldn't hit them. They struggled to hit her as well, but eventually if I didn't rescue Wendy, she would slowly die to this guy. Currently moving in would just cause my rat squad to die. I needed to be patient, and waited for most of the enemies near them to die, meaning Alan with Armads could inch his way closer to the fighter, and eventually make them move away. With a little more assistance, my armors were no longer surrounded, meaning they could use triangle attacks again to finish off the surviving enemies. Then all what was left to do is make my way over to the boss. Rodger had over a 30% chance to hit them, which was more than enough for them to die in a reasonable amount of time. Meaning we could move on to chapter 19, a scary fog of war map that I'm sure would be hard if any of the enemies could attack with magic. Yeah, this was like one of the easiest maps in the game for me. I just rescued Roy and Nime, positioned to triangle attack, and just waited for everything to die one at a time. When the enemy stopped approaching, I moved up, found more enemies, killed them in the same way as the others. But then I got jump scared by a idiot who forgot to equip any magic. There was actually another pacifist druid, but he was actually a menace, as he was positioned in such a way that I couldn't triangle attack him, and everyone had zero hit on him since he got an avoid boost from the forts. I tried using Nime 
way to bait him into using silence to make him move, but that didn't work, and I actually had to reset. Fortunately, this problem could easily be solved by equipping Nime with warp to allow me to triangle attack this guy. The boss was our last obstacle, and probably the hardest part about this map, as Wendy only had a 19% chance to hit her with armads, and when the boss's weapon broke, a 7% chance. Considering this would be around a 1% chance to hit in true hit, I didn't think I could outpace the boss's healing, meaning I reset the map again, and when I reached the boss, I gave Wendy a secret book to improve her hit. This time, with a 25% chance to hit, I managed to kill her, ending the chapter. Chapter 20 initially seemed a little harder than it actually was, mostly because for this run the map's difficulty is front loaded, as if I just bashed all the enemies in the first two rooms this map was going to be simple. I think everyone in the eastern room was quite easy with my armoured units and the triangle attack, so the difficulty came from my other team, as at first I had to deal with enemies from below and to the left. Obviously I prioritised the units to the left since there were fewer of them there, and with them eventually gone I could focus on the enemies below. Initially there were no problems, but the more enemies I killed the harder it got as the mages moved closer to attack, dealing massive damage at a distance, making them quite frustrating to beat. But with good luck, they were no problem, meaning I could head down further, open the chests, recruit Juno, rescue the villagers, and head over to the boss. That was harder than expected to reach because of this armored unit. Fortunately, when they were low enough, they ran away to heal. But then a sniper moved in, blocking me from moving again. So I attacked them, they ran away, and now the boss was within striking distance. The quickest way to deal with this was to just guarantee a crit of a triangle attack. But one triangle attack alone wasn't enough to kill. Fortunately, Nime could warp one of my armors in position to allow me to triangle attack twice, dealing just enough damage to clear the way to the throne, so with a dance, Roy could seize. Chapter 20X is like one of the easiest maps in the game, as they intend you to split up, but they place these conveniently placed breakable walls allowing you to just group everyone together, then considering you're only really fighting like 2-3 to three enemies at a time when you start breaking down the walls to reach the boss, this map is extremely easy, there's like no fort involved. After reaching the boss, I decided to grind up on new obtained Juno since she would allow the use of another triangle attack and I also grinded up Thea and Faye. I ended up stopping around the time Juno reached her level cap and then I tried to kill the boss but with his spectacular defense and HP along with their reasonable speed stat combined with the fact that there was intraversible terrain to his left and right meaning I couldn't triangle attack making him extremely difficult to beat with Alan so I ended up coming up with a strategy of attacking with Alan then rescuing him out of range allowing Thea to attack then rescuing her out of the way so Faye could attack. With this strategy, my chances of killing the boss increased, and his healing was less of an issue, allowing me to eventually beat them and move on to chapter 21. This map has a large amount of zone-based reinforcements, which means if you know where the zones are, you don't really have to deal with the reinforcements, meaning the hardest part about this map were the large amount of wyverns that pushed towards you initially, and since I needed to clear this map in 30 turns to unlock chapter 21x, I needed to play fast and rely on quite a few unreliable around 50% chances to hit with Moltet to kill the incoming wyverns. Additionally, I needed to utilize a triangle attack help land swift and reliable kills, which I needed to use Juno for, who had quite mediocre stats, so I patched up her durability with two angelic robes. Fortunately, I only really needed good luck on the first three turns, to take out the three groups of wyverns to the right, and any wyverns towards the left side of the map could easily be killed by my armored units. They had a slight problem with the mages, and I had to use some physics to keep them alive, but eventually I managed to take out the mages, meaning they would no longer take much damage. Once most of the enemy flyers were taken out, I used my own flyers to transport some of my healers along with Roy over this mountain to avoid the reinforcement zone near the upper right side of the map. They now just progressed until they were around this forest, just outside of range of another reinforcement zone. Since I didn't want to have to deal with any reinforcements, I now warped my free flyers along with Roy over to Murdoch, needing to use Hermione on my warp in order to be able to do this. Then Fia attacked, dealing just enough damage for Shana to come in and secure the kill. With the throne seized, we moved on to chapter 21x, another quite easy chapter, as the Despite the fog, not many enemies really charged towards you, meaning I had more than enough time to steadily kill the approaching enemies with 
triangle attacks that honestly were no problems. Then the map got even easier when I started to move up, as there were like no enemies to slow my advance. Once I reached the boss, I just set up a triangle attack to one-shot them, and then seized. After Roy finally promoted, we began Chapter 22, a map that as long as you take it pretty slow is real easy. As not that many enemies really come at you at once, the AI for the enemy seem to be that if you're within their attack range, they move, or for some of them, if you're within attack range, oh, if no. they move twice. Since the enemies didn't move, I decided to completely ignore my spot on the left, since they weren't in danger, and I just progressed on the right, using triangle attack to kill the sparse amount of enemies that moved close enough for me to attack. Eventually, I stood on the top right tile and began my march around the map to meet up with my other squad. Again, there were no problems, and when I reached my other squad, I decided to attempt to train up Faye by breaking these bishops' weapons to gain 1 EXP at a time. And I also gained some more EXP by killing some of the enemies, that I also went out of my way to break their weapons to make it safe for Faye to kill them. Additionally, by attacking the enemies with no weapons, I could make the bishops above use their physics, so later on they wouldn't heal up Zephyr. After activating the top left tile, I grinded up a little more EXP on Faye, and made my way over to the front room. I used some stat boosters and placed Roy to open the door. For this final formation of enemies, I used three berserks to kill one bishop on enemy phase. I now charged in with Faye, dealing massive damage to the two druids at an impressive high hit rate. With two powerful triangle attacks, the heroes were no more. Again, with the help of Berserk, a sniper died on enemy phase, leaving two helpless Manakeets, who with them gone, left a clear path to Zephiel. And as long as I blocked the stairs, there was also no reinforcements to worry about. Luckily, with phase high hit rates, Zephiel was a joke, and died to one attack on enemy phase, and two more on the next player phase. With the throne seized, and all legendary weapons in my possession, we moved on to chapter 23. A map that started similarly to chapter 21. There's quite a few wyverns that rush in, and I needed decent luck to kill most of them quickly with fear, and the wyverns to the north could be killed with my armored units, with triangle attacks, but the druid to the north put a wrench in this plan, so I just lured some of the wyverns down below, and swiftly killed them, allowing my armors to use a triangle attack to beat the druid. Now I just moved my armored units up, but waited for the ballista to run out of uses. Once that was completed, I steadily moved up, relying primarily on my armored units to fight off the remaining wyverns. For some of the wyverns, I just broke their weapons to help gain a few levels on Roy to help him against Idun. With the wyverns now gone, I simply waited for the druids to run out of uses of Sleeping Berserk, then I moved in, and what's weird about this group of units at the end here is they just don't really attack, except the Manakee, who Faye easily killed. I tried safely baiting them out by using Fear over here, but that didn't really accomplish anything, so I just placed Faye near them in a forest. They didn't really attack her, and I expected that they actually just don't attack you unless they could attack you without moving, so they were pretty easy to beat when I realized this, meaning next up was the boss at Branya. With her impressive avoid, my best choice to fight her was Faye. She had around a 50% chance to hit and dealt over half her HP in a single attack. Once she landed two attacks, I could seize and move on to chapter 24. Fortunately, another pretty easy one as the Manakeets were extremely vulnerable to triangle attacks, since they allowed me to one-shot them with effective weaponry, allowing me to swiftly advance. And my strategy for most rooms on this map were just kill the first Manakeet with the reliable and strong Fey, then load in the other two Manakeets with my armored units. Now some triangle attacks could take them down, along with the one on the throne. With Clarine to rescue Roy, the Manakeets approaching from behind were mostly easy to avoid. I only had a little trouble around here, but since they can't attack at a distance, I could just safely stall them for a few turns here, then I ran away and had no further problems. On the entire map really, as the boss could be one shot with a triangle attack, meaning we could advance to the final chapter. That is like one of the easiest maps in the game. I just killed the first two Manakeets, walked Roy up to Idun, he only had to land two attacks to kill her. With no throne to increase her avoid, I landed the two attacks in like two turns to finish the game. This run kind of sucks, it's just kind of tedious really. So if you did enjoy the video, I would appreciate if you subscribed and liked the video. Also, I've been considering doing more of these enemies have 99 inner stat challenge, so let me know how you feel about them in the comments. And if you've got any suggestions on what games you'd like to see for this type of run, drop that in the comments too. Anyway, see ya, bye.